Hey folks, welcome to another sub-query video where I'm going to take you through a very simple aggregation project. What we'll do is take the starter project and look at how we can aggregate data. So specifically, we'll index staking rewards and then aggregate or sum them up over a particular account. So in effect, we're trying to find out how much reward an account has accumulated over time. So let's go ahead and jump into our Visual Studio code first of all. And as always, we'll go ahead and initialize a starter project. Okay, so we've gone ahead and run through the subql init. We've called our project staking rewards. And the very first thing that I'm going to do is update my GraphQL schema. So this is the file here, uh, this default. Let me go ahead and remove this. And I'm going to replace it with something called sum reward. And I'm just going to paste this in, in the interest of time. And the information here is coming out of a lab workbook, which I'll link to in the video down below. What we've got here is an entity called sum reward with the compulsory ID field. But then we've got this extra field called account reward along with the block height. So a very simple object here. Let me save this. Now what I'll do is let me go ahead and run yarn install first of all. There we go. Now next up I'll run yarn code gen and this is going to generate the TypeScript code for me from this entity schema. And I should be able to see this if I go ahead and open my types, jump into some reward and you'll see this is auto generated and I've got my ID, my account reward and the block height along with some default functions for me to utilize down the track. So now that we've got this going, next up I want to go ahead and jump into my manifest file. Now this is the default manifest file you can see pointing to Polkadot production environment with the dictionary. So I'm going to uh, get rid of the block handler, let's get rid of this, and also the call handler because I'm going to just work with the event handler going to change this and call this reward. You could really call it whatever you want. And then down in my modules, I'm going to filter on something called a staking and down below called rewarded. And if you're not sure why I'm choosing this, we can jump into something like uh, the polka dot documentation. You can see here we've got the events metadata and then scrolling down we're going to focus on the staking and then within our staking module scrolling down we've got the rewarded method and inside this method we've got two parameters or two fields one's called stash and then the second one called amount so the stash is where the rewards are going to and then the amount is the amount in dot What I'll also do is change the start block. So let's change it from one to seven million. And this is just so that we can index a lot quicker. We don't have to go all the way back to the start of the blockchain. And when I'm running my query, I'll actually get some data out. Now, a side note that in older versions, the method was actually called reward. What we'll do here is we're going to use the new version called rewarded. And next up, we'll jump into our mappings file. So here you should be able to see that we've got these standard uh, three handlers from the starter project. Let me delete this and we'll go ahead and create our own. Now, first of all, up above, we don't have our starter entity anymore. Our entity is called sum reward. 
so let's change that and then we'll go ahead and create a very simple function here we'll call it handle reward because remember this one matches our manifest file here handle reward and then we are using the substrate event so we don't need extrinsic let's remove this and we don't need substrate block either now within our function here the next thing we'll do is we're going to create an object like so which basically allows us to extract the two parameters from the event that has been filtered so we're calling this account and new reward but again we could call this anything that we want and in fact we could choose the default which from the documentation was actually called stash and amount but again we'll just use these and then in the next step let's go ahead and create another variable we'll call it entity and we're going to get the account to string now what we're doing here is we're getting the this account here that's coming through from our event and we're allocating this to an entity and then next up we're going to do a small little check like so to see if it is undefined because if we already have an account come through that's already in our database we've already indexed it then what we can do is add to it otherwise we go ahead and create a brand new instance of it so this is a little helper function that we'll have to create and I'll add this up above here like so all it does is it's got a function create some reward with a single argument here called account ID and if the entity is undefined it'll jump into here and create a new instance of the sum reward and then set the actual reward to zero so initializing it to zero before moving on next up I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab the block height so let's go entity here dot block height and I'm going to make this equal to event dot block and you can see here the autocomplete is very useful and this is a very standard way to grab the actual block height and what I'll do next is with my entity in my account reward I'm going to do the aggregation so this is really the the key line of this particular project where I'm going to say new reward and I'll cast this as a balance and then I'll uh, cast this across to uh, big int as well and then of course as always the very last thing we need to do is let's go and save this so something very simple very quick again just a quick recap it's just the handle reward function where we're filtering the event for the module staking and method reward or rewarded and just double checking if we've already got the entity if we don't we go ahead and create it and then assigning the block header and doing the summation or the aggregation of the account reward over our new reward variable so with that let's go ahead and build the code and then I'll run the standard docker compose pull bring down the image okay so we can see the node is up and running and we're starting to fetch some blocks so let's now go ahead into our playground here we go here and I've got an existing query here already but let me delete this and we'll start from scratch because quite often it's good to understand how this works the top node is always query so we always start with query and then next up we want to jump into our sum rewards within sum rewards we've got our nodes and then we can access the account reward the block height etc so let's jump into 
queries. Let's go sum rewards. This is the plural. Open parentheses. And then we've got our nodes. And again, the autocomplete is super useful. Let's go account reward and block height as well. Let's hit run. We'll see if we've got any data yet. And we do, which is great to see. So let's also add an ID in here. And we'll also say limit this to the first 10 results. And we'll run this. And of course I could add the date time, so when this was created as well. So let's add that in, hit run. And you can see we've got the results coming back, which is really good. Now, the question is, how do we do a quick cross check? Okay, so what I'll do now is I'm going to grab this particular ID and I'm going to copy this and do a search inside subscan. What we can see is we've got two extrinsics, but 163 records in reward and slash. So let's jump into this and take a closer look. Now what you'll note here is that we've got a whole bunch of records with the action staking reward and the value in dot here. Now if we do a quick comparison, what we're trying to do is find the block height of 7,001,820. So let's go across and we'll view all. And on the third page, what you should be able to see is that we've gone ahead and indexed this particular record here. And the data matches because you can see we've got uh, 0 0.082, this is the amount rewarded, and we're at block height 1820, which is this one here. Now, if I run this again, you can see that the total hasn't changed. That is because the subquery node is still indexing from 7 million. So it's from this point onwards. So we're not going to get any of the data in the 6 million down here, only 7 million onwards. And if I give the node a bit more time, it will eventually index 7 million and 22,000, etc. And if we take a look at the indexer progress, you can see here we're at 7 million and 13,000. So not quite at the 7 million 22,000 that we are waiting for. So we'll give it a few more minutes and hopefully we should see the account reward total change from being equal to this figure here to being the summation of these two values here. Okay, I've gone ahead and refreshed the query and I've actually indexed a few more records. So what I can do is update my query to search for the specific ID that I'm looking for. There we go. So it's just using the GraphQL query language, just to filter out for this particular address. And you can see we're still at block height 1820. Looking at the current index, we're almost there. We're at 7,021,000. And we're hoping to get to 22,000, which should allow us to pick up the second row here with 0.11 dot. And then the account reward should change from 8 to 1 to the summation of both these numbers. Okay, so here we go. Now I've rerun the query and you can see the account reward has changed. And the current block height is 702, which has accommodated uh, this record as well. So the total account reward, 3067, should actually be the summation of these three numbers here. So if I go ahead and let's copy this. And if you want to go ahead and prove this is true, what I can do is copy this into the calculator here. 
and you can see the result is 0 0.3067 and it matches what we've got up above here as well. So there we have it, a very simple aggregation project where we can go ahead and index the staking rewards in the Polkadot system and of course once the indexer has synchronized to the current block height we can query for any particular address to find out their aggregated staking amount. I hope you found this useful. Look out for the next video where we'll take some of these concepts to a higher level as well. Catch you then.